as Sunday, November 2nd dawned clear, all in Addis Ababa began to prepare for the impressive event of the morning. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah and his empress have just completed a night of prayer and devotion at the Most High Altar within. Through the early morning, the chanting of praises continued, accompanied by the dancing of priests with their great pulsating drums, the whole event suggestive of the ancient Jewish rites, which were in use at the time of King David when he danced before the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. Preceded by waving incense burners, his imperial majesty attired in white silk communion robes entered the ceremonial hall with an escort of aides and clergy and took his place upon the throne. Mm. The thrilling but solemn silence gently breaks to the throaty voice of his holiness, the Abuna Kurilios, who says, Ye princes and ministers, ye nobles and chiefs of the army, ye soldiers and people of Ethiopia, and ye doctors and chiefs of the clergy, ye professors and priests, look ye upon thee. Our Emperor Haile Selassie I descended from the dynasty of Menelik I, who was born of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, a dynasty perpetuated without interruption from the time of King Sahal to our times. It is written that 49 bishops and priests of this ancient Christian country in groups of seven have held place for seven days and nights in the seven corners of the National Cathedral to chant without ceasing nine psalms of David. They are now joined by hundreds more. The established Coptic Church is revered and all-powerful in Ethiopia. This is a day when it may and does show its impressive might and splendor. The Emperor, whose name is anglicized as the power of the Holy Trinity, before the questioning of the Abuna, gives his sacred pledge to uphold the Orthodox religion of the Church, to support and administer the laws of the country for the betterment of the people, to maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, and to found schools for developing the spiritual and material welfare of her subjects. Now it says that chanting and prayers to the God of Gods rise from a multitude of priestly throats and reverberate from the lofty ceiling of the cathedral. One by one, with the solemn rites and blessings of the high Ethiopian clergy, he received the gold embroidered scarlet robes, the jeweled sword, imperial gold scepter, the orb, the diamond encrusted ring, and two gold degree lances in token of his position and responsibility. Now following ancient customs, as when Samuel anointed David, and as when Zadok and Nathan anointed Solomon, so the Abuna anointed his majesty's head with oil. Seven differently scented ointments of ancient prescription are received upon the imperial head, brow and shoulders. The Abuna then concluded with these words, that God make this crown a crown of glory, that by the grace and the blessing which we have given, you may have an unshaken faith and a pure heart in order that you may inherit the crown of eternal. So be it. And the writer writes here that the centuries seem to have slipped suddenly backwards to biblical ritual. Now, this is a report by Addison E. Southern, the United States Minister to Ethiopia, published in the National Grain Geographic Magazine, June 1931. And I personally give thanks for this account, because really when I read it, I can really imagine being there. And I always say if I could time travel anywhere in the world, I would travel to November 2nd, 1930, 91 years ago today, to experience the splendor and the might that is, you know what I mean? depicted in this article so you can check out the article online there's even video and like i say make sure you research the truth of the king of kings because on that day november 2nd 1930 you know what i mean you could have been the king of england the king of switzerland the king of france but you had to come down to ethiopia come up to ethiopia to bow down to the king of kings the new Senegast, at a time when all of africa was colonized but ethiopia remained free and his imperial majesty show you yo you better come and bow down to the lion of judah and him say that the African Holocaust is over. You know what I mean? So we give thanks for the revelation of His Imperial Majesty and Her Imperial Majesty on this day. And we pray that step by step the truth may come to light. The truth cannot be hidden forever. One day these doors will be open on Coronation Day for the anniversary celebration. You know what I mean? So we give thanks and praise in the name of His Imperial Majesty and Prophet Celestia and Her Imperial Majesty and Rest Me Night of Ethiopia. Ja, Rastafari. Zabiri Mazga. Give thanks.